Hi, this is Ronald Johnson, your life coach, mentor coach. And what I do is I help people that are tired of who they are and where they are in life. And this is Gloria, your life coach. I help those who are feeling stuck, struggling with difficulties such as self-doubt, inner judgment, lack of confidence, life transitions, and taking steps forward. And welcome to Life's A Shuffle podcast. Now, you may wonder why it's called Life's A Shuffle. And the reason why we came up with this title was that life is really shuffling. And it doesn't matter where you come from, your background, what age you are, you're shuffling multiple things in life. And the best thing to know in life is everybody faces your struggles and everybody faces what you're going through. But there's hope in learning something about that. So when our guests share their journey, the hope is you learn something in that journey so yourself can navigate the struggles you face, the low self-esteem, the self-confidence. And that's why we call podcast Life's a Shuffle. And throughout this podcast, we share our personal overcoming stories, as well as our guests who shares their personal journey in overcoming their personal struggles. Life's a Shuffle podcast is here to connect like-minded individuals. And thank you for listening to Life's a Shuffle podcast. Hi, this is Gloria, your mindfulness coach, and welcome to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. Hi, this is Ronald Johnson, your mindfulness coach. Welcome to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. Today will be a freestyle raw. So we went from freestyle Thursday to now freestyle raw. And Rocker. I, I like this doing better that. because we just putting just putting it out there, it's putting the SH out there. That's how I gotta say, put things out there. Why don't you just say it? Shit. <laughs> yeah, I guess I can. I should. Well, right? Going raw, right? So you might <laughs> as well raw. just say, it. yeah. Putting the shit out there for all you guys out there to hear, listen to, and laugh at, whatever feels best for you. Um, you know. This has been a pretty cool week. Last week was a cool week. Um, I did something that I'm accomplishing the goal of. You know, when we when we get ready to do something, it, we're committed to first, let's say, a week or two. And then at the period of time, we kind of wean off, right? You know, the commitment's not there. We find excuses, whatever. When I was listening to Tony Robinson's YouTube video one day, he said, it's not the, the idea of having a goal. The idea is having the why that's in the goal more powerful. The more powerful the why, the easier it is to accomplish the goal. If your why is not powerful enough, you can set you a thousand goals, but you won't accomplish nothing. So to this week is marked as eight, eight days straight of shooting a live video, not live, sorry, a recorded video every day. So what I was doing before is I was schedule, let's say a live video on Facebook. Let's say today is, you know, Monday, I'll schedule it for Friday at, you know, 5 a.m., not 5 a.m., sorry, 10 a.m. or 5 p.m., right? As the day got closer, I start to realize that, oh, man, I don't want to do it. What's the subject about? Oh, I got to research that. I I just very very non-energetic showing up to shoot these videos. So what I start doing now, I say, okay, cool. What I'm going to do, I like that term, okay, cool, because it means that I'm going to do something. Let's say, okay, Ron, you're going to make a commitment to yourself and shooting a live video every day for seven days. Okay, good. Once you hit that seven day, now you got to extend the commitment another 23 days. And the why was in that is, okay, I'm going to shoot the video. I'm going to get used to shooting videos. They're going to be one to five minutes long, depending on what they're going to do. And you're going to do it consistently. And why you're going to do this because you want to increase your visibility on social media. For me, writing a long blog or doing a picture in a long blog, you know what? I get past three or four sentences. I'm like done. I am really love shooting videos. So the idea is now I can shoot video making it easier for me to show up because now the why is by shooting up videos, I create enough content, I get more confident what I'm doing. And now on top of that, which I figured out, you know, two days ago, was I have constant content as my email campaign. So what you can do now too is I can drop a link inside there instead of shoot, you know, write up three or four paragraphs, put a video in there, shoot the email out and guess what? I've got more clicks on that video that I shot on my email a couple of days ago than any other video or sorry, any other email I sent out. So the video for me is the way. And the point is for you guys out there is whatever you're doing, you really got to find the powerful, powerful why, then the goal has to be powerful enough to be consistent with what you're doing because it's not doing three or four things and 
shebang, there you go. You know, it's about creating things that are consistent. And over time, as things build up, you get what you have worked for, right? It's very simple. So that's the way you set commitments. So you make commitment to yourself for doing whatever it is. And make sure, more importantly, how do you show up when it's time for that commitment, whatever it is? How do you show up so that way you yourself personally can make sure you keep doing it consistently? That's the main key. <clears throat> okay. I, I like the goal. I like the commitment. And I like setting, you know, I, I like setting a goal, right? But why set a limit of, let's say, seven days? Because I think sometimes, okay, maybe not with you, but others, I mean, some, it's, it, sometimes it is for other people and sometimes it's not for other people. What works for you works for you, right? And it may not work for others. So when you set, this is what happens, I believe, sometimes to why people start falling or losing motivation because you set that certain boundaries or a limit of seven days. You hit seven days, it's like, okay, what do I want to do now? I'm really not feeling this anymore then some will have the tendency of just stopping because they lose the motivation because they hit that limit of I'm setting a goal for seven days. So you're motivated for the first seven days until you hit the last day. And then, you know, not everyone will do what you did was to kind of take that step back and, and think, what do I want to do? Um, do I want to continue this? Or, you know, and, and just realizing and thinking about the why, why you're doing this. And what's motivating you to do this? And and that's the thing is that you, the why has to be so compelling and so powerful that you're able to last seven days or a month or six months or one year. Mm -hmm. That's the key there. And just kind of detach yourself to the outcome too. Um, because sometimes you, you know, set, when you set a goal, you put a limit so you have a limit and then you have that attachment of, you know, of, of an outcome. But Correct. if you just detach yourself from all that and then, then you go back to your why, then you just, you know, continue doing what you're doing. You just end up enjoying it. You don't even have, you don't have that attachment to an outcome anymore. Correct. And you don't have that, that, um, that boundary of that limit of like, okay, I'm going to stop at once I get this done at this time. Or, you know, because I set a goal for, let's say seven days, uh, I'm going to stop and then I'll see what I want to do next after that. No, but when you detach yourself from all of that and you're just doing because then you go back to your why, you're just going to keep doing it because you're enjoying it. I think you hit the nail right on the head is that when I created this idea of doing one video a day, so me one video a day, Posting on social media, one video a day, one picture a day, I have zero expectation. That's the exact what happened. I'll say, Ron, I'm going to commit to doing something. So what I'm trying to say is that you're right. Once we start doing something and then on top of whatever we're doing, the why is that compelling enough? And on top of that why, we have this expectation that in a short amount of time, we should get an outcome. So, you know, X plus X equals Y, let's say, right? What happens is that we now have this expectation that if it doesn't happen in a time frame, we have subconsciously subconsciously told ourselves, we thus get frustrated. Ugh, I've been doing this now for six months and I'm still not getting what I want. What happens now is you set in motion different energy levels to your body where now you get frustrated. You don't want to do it as much. You, you, you're upset because the outcome expectation is there. But the why is there. The why makes you happy enough that you don't need to worry about the expectation. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, um, so that that's what was working for you. And then, you know, you had set limitations and all that. And then for me it was the other way. Okay. So I stuck with my why. I'm, I don't do videos as much as you do. And, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm still getting there. I'm still just getting comfortable. Right. But the moment when I put myself out there and I decided, you know, I'm going to shoot this video and just do a, a short video on, let's say I was doing a promo on, on a virtual seminar, right? Or just a meditation that I was doing. Once I started doing that and I got that out of the way, just kind of, for me, it's more like my gut, my butterflies, right? Because 
I wasn't comfortable. But the moment I got myself out there and I did it, I just, I didn't have, I honestly did not have any expectations or any attachment to it. For me, it was more like facing that. It wasn't really, I wouldn't say fear, but just being uncomfortable. So the moment I faced that and I decided to do it, I'm just going to do it. So when, when, you know, I, I didn't set any limit for myself. And when I did it and I said, wow, this is actually not bad. It's actually pretty cool. It's fun. And you do get, if you get response back, if I get a response back from people, great. Even better, right? Mm -hmm. Which I did because people hardly sees my face or sees my, my life, you know, me live. It's mostly pictures. But it was, for others, it was nice for them to to see me and hear me, even if it's just video, as if like I'm talking to them. That's what I got out of it. But you know, that that's cool. That's great that I, I had response. Um, but for me, it was more like for me. Like I did it. I got that out of the way, you know, um, getting out of my comfort zone. And it was actually fun and I liked it and I enjoyed it. So will I keep, will I continue doing it? Yes. So again, it's just, you know, sometimes we set those limits for ourselves. My For me, it was getting out of my com comfort zone in that way. I think for you was, you know, just having an expectation maybe. Yeah. I mean, you can have expectation, you can have a fear or you can have negative feedback based upon someone else's assumption about something. Mm -hmm. It can be all the above, but up until you create an action plan or create an action all three of those really will be real for you. So let's say someone else's assumption, let's say fear, let's say expectation. And to you create an action plan that's powerful enough, those three, you know, um, let's say walls will come up and the walls can be different. Someone can have all three. Someone said this, someone else's expectation because what they went through, it can be a fear and it can be an expectation of something. So, uh, sorry, first one's assumption, sorry. So assumption, fear, expectation. And this is where you yourself can have the ability to create an action plan and see if it's true for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So good, good job. Congratulations. Yeah. Us both. Us both. Oh, by the way, you just got certified as a meditation coach, right? Yes. So I got my mindfulness and meditation certification. I just, um, I submitted I think I submitted my video um, within about like 48 hours or so, I believe. And then I got the result and, you know, I just had to do a lot of um, finish up some more and wrap up before I got the actual um, certification. But it was, I, God, thank you. It was, I, I feel so good. I was just thinking to myself, man, all those late nights and trying to read and, and I'm um, trying to understand and just educate you know, just kind of give my, educate myself more. It just it felt so good to finally finish. And I knew that, you know, the last few days when I had about a couple more days of that, and I said, okay, I have a few more days, I have a few more days, I can do this, I can do this. And it was, I think the closer I got, it, I was getting a little bit more nervous, but, it, you know, I was getting more excited because each, I forgot how many sessions each, after every few sessions or whatever, there's a test, right? So, that and then the, obviously the final was, okay, how am I going to sound? How is my voice going to be? Because there's there's something that they're looking for, an opening, the middle and the ending, you know, whatever. And I had to put together some stuff. But it was such a wonderful feeling to um, to have something accomplished that, that's been in the back of my mind. Um, and yeah, I, you know, it was like you, I've set a goal of I'm going to do this. And I, I'm hoping to get it done and finish by the end of February. Oh, nice. So you made it. That was my goal is by the end of February. Yes. And I said, holy moly, I didn't know that I was going to get it done before. Because the thing is, again, when we go back to setting limits and, you know, limitations, whatever to yourselves, for me, I, the, I set that goal of by the end of February, I want this done. Now, can I promise myself that I could do it and that I was going to get it because of amongst the other stuff that I'm doing with it, right? I, I mean, I have other, I have my job and then I have other things also, right? And I said, I think I can do this. So I, the goal I set myself was end of the month. 
And so every day I was on this late nights and, and just trying to accomplish this. I didn't realize that I was getting it done even before the goal that I set for myself. That's because I was enjoying the process mm. and it, I, it didn't feel that when I was up late night doing this, sometimes it didn't feel like it. Yeah, because you had a passion for it. Yes. And so I truly, truly enjoy the process and, you know, and just becoming um, a part of another community of like a lot of great, wonderful people again and the support. It was just, I, I was just feeling really grateful. And you, when did you start? Like, give me a timeline. How, when did you start? Um, and how many hours you spent a night working or total? How many hours? So when did you start and how many hours total did it take you to finish this? So the course could be done in, you know, it could be in a month or so. It depends on the person, right? So there's, it's every day, every day is something different. It's not like one of those where you can, you can skip and you can, if you want to get, you know, all it's, it's about 30 sessions, right? So if you want 30 sessions, maybe if there wasn't a limit where you can, a, a person can maybe get it done one whole day. No, it wasn't like that. It was something different every day. So I started um, in January, I believe, um, mid-January. Oh, wow. So six weeks then? Maybe less? Um, let's say, yeah, six, yeah. Is that six weeks about? Yeah, about mid-January. Well, mid-January, let's say it's four weeks almost, right? Because so we're almost... Mm -hmm. You know, it's a short month anyways, right? I didn't Fair. skip a day. I really, I, okay, if I did skip a day, I probably just did one or two days. But it wasn't like consecutive two days, you know. Um, I mean, I even on weekends, I was doing this. Nice. So what you're doing is that you're cut, carving out time. So it's it's not like you have a certain amount of time to finish. You set your own time limit. Is that correct? Exactly. Oh, nice. If you, if those are spending one hour a week doing it, it may take them a year. While you're spending every day for a couple hours, it took you like say four to five weeks to, to accomplish this goal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, yeah. And there's, you know, there's stuff that you need to, you have to read because you really have to understand the science about it too, right? It's not just about like, okay, here you go. This is how you teach meditation. No, you also have to understand um, other things, the science about it, the, um, you know, there's some scripts. How how do you teach this? How do you do? How do you guide someone to meditate? What if there's someone who can't sit still and they can't they can't keep their their mind calm or they can't quiet the mind, whatever, right? So there's all those different things, and there's there's different types of meditations that I also had to learn. It wasn't just sitting down. It could be. Um, walking meditation which i didn't even know right really? and it, to me that made sense it's like oh my god when you're just walking you're you're it's a meditation and there's a you know but anyway so all all those different types and so yeah when when i sometimes when i have that chance of um i feel like just calming myself down or just sitting still and just relaxing then I go back to to reading and there's articles and research papers. Yeah. Mm. Awesome. Then so you did it. I did it. It feels really, really great and wonderful. Hell Thank yeah. You. Yeah. So since you got this new certificate, how are you going to use that to, let's say, not only help yourself, because first you have to help yourself and help anybody else. How are you going to use that to really help your clients and get your name out there as lawyer to meditation guru? <laughs> well, you know, is, right? <laughs> yeah so the, it's going to be a part of you know obviously what I, i'm doing aside from life coaching it will there will be some meditation part of it too because now i know and we do this a lot also with our virtual seminars is that we meditate first before we get into the topic that we talk about or whatever we discuss for that day so same thing with with my clients with the life coaching or mindfulness coaching you know i offer meditation first it could be 5 minutes it could be 10 minutes or longer it could just nice. even be just a minute of meditation but to help you know just kind of center yourself and before we get started nice you know what cuz when you posted about that told me about it i clicked on the link I actually posted it, i think yesterday on instagram 
I clicked on the, the tag something, whatever. The school, I the um, yeah, school, the school. Positive transformation, yes. Yeah, I ta- I, so I saw that and I clicked on the link. I'm like, oh man, you know, I mean, nice to do meditation, but knowing me, I don't like too much crap on my plate because I'm not going to do it. So, I, okay, the cool meditation. I, what I'm really leaning on now as I love meditation, but the MER and NLP, that's like, I'm going to lean the hell on that. Um, the meditation be added to my queue, um, you know, because working with Ray as a spiritual coach, I mean, holy shit, what breakthroughs we were having. Um, and when she told me about my human design, that was the best thing ever. So I want to get involved in that vividly. Mm-hmm. So back to my point being is I checked it out. I want to get in meditation. And I think, it, no, I feel, forget think, I feel it helps out a lot. Um, in the morning, at night, or whatever you need to just calm yourself. Every book I've ever read, Consciousness, they always talk about breathing. Mm-hmm. Just breathe, just relax, calm. Because, you know, the point about meditation is that when you, we are predetermined to have a fight or flight response. So whenever we have this fight or flight response, it not only affects our heart rate and our breathing, but it also affects our cells. But if we can control our breathing and focus on what we're going to do, we can actually accomplish it. Mm-hmm. it. It's it's really it really is how you feel when when I first express this is like you know I think I'm ready I'm ready to teach this and I'm ready to do this. And nice. it was what was that? No, go ahead, go ahead. No, it what it was is the question that was asked to me was, do you really why why do you really want to do this? I, said, I don't know. I feel it right. So it's how you feel. It's not because. It, it it's hard to explain, but when you really feel it, go for it. You know, when you say, I think I want to teach, it's not so much more of thinking. It's more like, do you feel it? You feel it because you believe in it. And then you want to share it. And I think that's what I got out of it is because when I first started doing this um, sometime last year, I think it was the beginning of last year, I was doing this like almost every day. You know, I was, and I was just like, oh my God. And the miracle that it did for me, it's, it's crazy. I'm telling you. And then, so months later I said, man, I, I want to show and, and share to people that this, what it really does to you. Just, you know, just try it. Right. And then, so what was, um, what I was told was when I was telling somebody this was that you want to share it because you feel it in your heart because why do you feel it in your heart because you believe it when you believe it you just want to show the whole world mm-hmm. same thing with my nlp mer and my videos i want i now i believe in it i want to share it to the world yeah why not i feel the same thing why not you only live once i guess i you know i, I don't think people live once i mean our, our souls live on once our bodies are gone but while you're here it's like you know I, I always think about this movie called Shaw and Shank Redemption with uh, Morgan Freeman. I forgot the other dude's name. And in the movie, you know, he says it very briefly, but it stuck with me. You have two choices in life. You can either get busy living or get busy dying. What one do you want to do? So while I'm still here, I'm going to get busy living. Mm-hmm. You, you just, just live your life. You know what? You know what? Sometimes I think what holds us back at the, at the same time, too, is judgment, right? Um, the outside judgment, people judging us. You know what I've realized, what really kind of opened me up a little bit too, is that there's always going to be judgment. People is always going to be judging you no matter what. It doesn't matter what you do. You're always going to be judged. Okay. So if you're out there sitting around in your couch and you're not doing anything all day, you're going to be judged being lazy, being a couch potato. But if you're out there chasing your dream, you're still going to be judged because they're going to look at you like, what the heck is this person doing? What kind of dream is that? Nice. You know what? You're right. You know, when you think about life, you're always going to be judged because there's always going to be someone with an opinion about something. Right. So you might as well just do something that you like to do and not do it and not do anything. I totally agree with that because opinions are clearly subjective, not objective. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, I was, you know, I, I was in that that phase for a little bit about, you know, going really through this process and just, just keep going with what I'm doing right now. Because in the back of my mind, 
there's that judgment that people's going to look at me like, oh, gosh, she's weird. Now, all this is like too woo-woo for a lot of people, right? Mm-hmm. And again, because they're, they're, some people will look at me like, this is not her. What happened? You know what I mean? But I've realized that whatever I do and whatever I do in my life, there's always going to be judgment. And will I let those people judging me hold me back from doing what I want to do? Like you said, we only live once. So I might as well just do what I want to do and keep living the life that I want to live regardless of the judgments. Because either way, they're going to be judging me. Either way, some people will be hating me. That's how I felt about it. No matter what you do, there's always going to be someone that has an opinion about something. And it's usually because they just don't want to understand. And we haven't got to the point where instead of, Instead of coming to the conclusion with something, look to understand it first, then say, okay, well, this doesn't work for me. But instead, we look to judge and come to our own conclusions without truly understanding what's really happening. You know, mm-hmm. like, I, I, it kind of hit me the other day is when I told my mom, hey, mom, you know, I respect the fact you're a Jehovah's Witness and you want to do that, but I don't want to be involved. All she did said to me was a scripture that I've heard, but never saw myself. We don't know how the George Witness do not know how to read Hebrew. So you don't know if it translates properly. And that was it. There was no question or, hey, by the way, I see you grew up George Witness. What has changed? And that's an, that's an empowering question. Oh, here's a scripture, something about uh, Jehovah's not going to make no one love them. And that's it. And that's exactly the reason why we as a society don't progress forward because we're always responding to something instead of having a curiosity person where we actually take the time to really understand. Now, once, once we understand a person's point of view, we can say, okay, well, this is not what I want, clearly, and we move on. But at least we got more knowledge and more information. Now we can make a judgment and move on. But without moving on, well, sorry, without we created judgments without getting more knowledge. Like this first is this life, the human design when Ray told me about it the first time. And she's like, oh, have you, ever, have you had your human, human design read? And I was like, oh, no, I have this first time. And I said, oh, she said, okay. I said, because growing Joe's witness, it's like the devil. So the minute something comes woo-woo out there, oh, shit, that's the devil. You know, you know, you, you <laughs> just gets, um, so I said, no, I never not done any of this stuff because, you know, my whole idea was anything that outside what the Bible says or what's in the organization, it's the devil. So you want, you want to be no part of that. And it's like, then you wonder why people constantly would call make mistakes because they don't understand the human design. They don't understand why they are. So once I figure out my human design as a generator, I'm leaning in on that sucker like you have no idea. My ass is planted. I'm strapped in. The rocket fuel is on. I'm ready to blast off because now I makes it makes sense. <laughs> I think I think like when you talk about blast off, oh, I know, I'm laughing because I, I just kind of I put myself in that situation and I was thinking, man, that was me. I was sitting down, I was strapped, I was I was ready to to go, but I couldn't go. You know, something was holding me back. But the moment I let go, I blasted off, and I'm just I just keep going. And I've going. realized too that you know when I went back to I went back to years of my life from before, I've realized that I think I'm the type of person that continues to grow. Mm-hmm. I wasn't just sitting and just, you know, some people sometimes when once you hit that plateau, you stay there because you're content and you're comfortable, right? And, and there's nothing wrong with that. And that's fine. But I, I thought to myself, I was never really that type of person to just you hit that flat once you hit that flat line you're you, it's a flat line for you mm-hmm. you know i although i've had my moments where i go down and then i go back up and then i go down and go back up but when i when i'm up i just keep going up then maybe i'll hit a straight a flat line for a little bit i find you know and then go oh my god i'm here it is again and i go up so i've always just all these years in my life it's just i think i just continue to grow it's like, uh, you know, once we get that, I call it the natural high, once we're in that higher vibrational level, mm-hmm. everything starts coming to us and mm-hmm. we start eating it up, right? Like a fat mm-hmm. kid loves cake. So when I, when you're in that vibration level of meditation, you feel centered, you feel happy. If you notice, everything starts coming to you once you're in line with your vibrational level of the mm-hmm. universe. Yeah. So when I'm, I'm in line with this vibrational uni- uh, level of 
uh, NLP and me are understanding my spirituality, everything's coming at me. YouTube videos. I'm telling you, non-stop. <laughs> <laughs> Books I've read. I mean, I'm almost done with uh, Bali Jibalip, great book, Bruce Lipton, read it. Um, you know, um, I, I'm, I'm reading all these wonderful books and because it's all, I, my vibration was so high that these videos coming at me, you know, I created a video today called The Five Love Languages, but how to make five love, love languages apply to you personally, not how you want to be receiving love, but we'll talk about that. I'll post a video later on. But I, I'm just, all this stuff's coming to me and I'm getting more creative with these videos. I mean, this time, what I did is I had a rose, I bit a rose, I used it as my um, prop, I had a rose in my mouth, right? <laughs> I smell the rose. And when I'm doing taking one petal, she loves me, she loves me not. Oh she my loves, God. So I'm just kidding. So when your vibration <laughs> level is higher, your creativity is higher and you just start, okay, I'm gonna try this and just do it, right? Yeah. <laughs> so that, that's that's kind of kind of where it's at with that. So Hey, uh, that's fine. Congratulations, you're a celebrity. I don't know if I'm a celebrity. I I was driving to the gym this morning and what came to mind was, man, you know what? If I did, I was coming back to my example I used before about if I won a lot or what would I do now? Before it was, man, if I had this amount of money, I can do this, 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 which is car, house, fancy clothes, hot girl, travel, right? All these exterior BS. Now it's like if I, if I ever decide to play the lotto, which I never have, I think one time and I didn't win, um, I would I wouldn't do anything but what I'm doing now. Like I wouldn't change anything. Mm -hmm. Maybe yes, I might travel more, but yeah, I would say, you know what? Who needs this money and who can I give it to? Like who really needs this help? Because I mean, you look at Texas right now, the weather, you know, you, you look at the homeless rate, you looked at the food shortages, not just the food shortages, but the the discrepancy of food. Like why is whole food cost much more money than a food max or food for less? Or grocery outlet. Okay, that's discrepancy right there. Why? Why? Why is a, a burger is a buck or two bucks? But yet, if I'm gonna go buy chicken breast, it's twenty dollars. I mean, that's that's the disparity right there itself. Why is a Coke a dollar? My phone water is two dollars. So why is water more expensive than Coke? Isn't water better for you than Coke? Why do disparities exist? So I would use my money, start my charity, and ho help people that really need to help. I just keep maintaining my life, baby. That's it. Yeah, I know. Somebody asked me that same question. Somebody asked me, what would you do? Oh, would you still work? And, you know, would you, would you, if you win the lottery, would you still work? Would you buy yourself, you know, like insurance car? And would you buy all this, you know, brand name clothing and shoes? And would you start dressing like this? I said, no. And he was like, why? And I go, because that's not me. Why am I going to change just because I have all the money in the world that a lot of people do, would want? The question, someone ever asked that question again, I would say, hmm, I wouldn't do all that because life is about living, leaving a legacy. Who did I help? So if you're not helping out somebody else, then what you really here for? Yeah. I mean, I already know what I'm going to do if I ever win the lottery. The first thing is, of course, I'm going to help our family in the Philippines. Awesome. That's the first thing I want to do is buy every single one of them a house. See, awesome. And obviously, you know, house is a lot cheaper than America, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it is. And just make sure that they're living comfortably, not like, you know, trying to figure out, okay, what are we going to eat today? How are we, where are we getting food? Or, you know, we, we need shoes, we need whatever, you know what I mean? So that that's the first thing. And, and obviously, you know, a lot of, you know, people that are, there's a lot of people in the third world country that really needs a lot of help. And I think my heart goes out to all of them, especially in, in this past year with a pandemic, realize, um, just, you know, realizing how fortunate we are here in the U.S. where all the kids here have, you know, all this um, tools to still continue school at home. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of people out there in a different country that don't have that. How are they studying? How are they? I mean, someone I know, um, oh God, uh, my mom, okay, my cousin. So my mom still has a lot of family in the Philippines. And one of them, um, so I have a cousin who I'm not, you know, not really that close to. But anyways, um, his kids had to stop school for a year. I think there oh was like three or four kids or something like that. And then my mom was telling me the story. And I was like, why? Because my mom said, well, 
her, um, they, they didn't have a job because of the pandemic, everything closed down. So they didn't have work. How are they going to send their kids to school? Yeah, why well, America, we always hear the term, we're Zoomed out. Other countries can't <laughs> get on damn Zoom. <laughs> yeah, you know, he has no money to send his kids to school. There's, you know, food and whatever else and everything else, you know, because. And how I know that is because he came and um, messaged my mom and is asking for help. But I'm just saying, you know, there's we're very yeah. fortunate enough here still. And there's a lot of people out there in a different country, in a third world country you are, and that's basic necessities, education, mm -hmm. basic necessity, just the basics. Yeah. And there's still kids, you know, this is where you first learn how to read, write. And, you know, I, I just I hate to think the mind, like what kind of trauma, not just the parents, right. But the trauma the kids are facing because now their idea is I need to have money. So that's because what happens the kid can say, hey, dad, you know, how come I'm not going to school? We don't have money. Oh, how come I, we're out of, I don't have money? So now it becomes the NLP program, which is I got to have a lot of money. So if I have a lot of money, I won't be able to survive. Here comes the NLP program. So I'm thinking about the kids and what they're facing trauma-wise and the parents at the same time. Yeah. So if I win the lottery, you're not going to see me here. You're going to see me in another country helping others. Hell Yeah. <laughs> It's because it's all about what you live, leave behind, right? I mean, mm -hmm. that's how that's how I look at it. Yeah, so. and and you know, like with with this, that you um, also you have all these things in your mind that it just keeps coming up for you. And and I think earlier I just wanted to bring this up because earlier you said oh, I don't, I just don't want too much in my plate. You know, you just take it one at a time, slowly. Mm -hmm. That's how I'm thinking about it, right? So I think. I really want to dive in deep. Um, there's a lot of coaching programs online on NLP. Mm -hmm. So I just want to make sure I do my research and I can commit to doing it. So you would hate to pay money. I've done this before. We all have pay money. And then, you know, you just don't do it. You just fall by wayside. So yeah. I need to commit to something. Yeah. And if you really feel it and you feel like this is for you and do it, you know, and again, it's with, uh, I'm investing in myself. You're investing in yourself. Meditation can come later. You can meditate with me. Yeah, we do it every time at a virtual seminar. I don't mind. Exactly. Get it, and, get it going. and we can do our own meditation whenever, you know, because I I honestly do this on my own sometimes. I meditate by myself and I say all these things to myself. It's awesome. Freaking amazing. Like I I don't even say it. But yeah, so whenever you want, you and I can just have like our own meditation session. And I'm you know, I'm fine with that. I'm cool with that. We should do it. Yeah. Just let me know whenever you feel like I need to quiet the mind. Let me call Gloria. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's, get, let's get on a Zoom call. Exactly. We could do it. I, I'm, I'd i be happy to do it. And I offer this to, um, I ran into um, someone I knew um, at the gym one time and we were just talking, what you, what are you up to? You know, like that. And, you know, I mentioned this to him. I said, Hey, look, Whenever you need um, anything, if you need this, because I know he believes in this stuff. And I said, you know, with um, your call, your, he's a church guy. So I even told him the group of people at church, gather them together. I'd be happy to come and do this for you guys. And then he said, well, then he talks about, you know, the charges. I said, no. I said, I'm not asking for anything right now. I'm more than happy to help and willing to help because this is what I believe in. And he's like, but I know you got to take take care of expenses too. I said, I know that's fine. We'll worry about that later on. But my heart is telling me I want to do this for you guys because I believe in it. So I want people to see what I really believe in. It goes back to fellow dreams. If you build it, they will come. Yeah. See, so building this passion is exciting around meditation, how it has helped you and how it's helped people that you know. Now it's time, hey, let me share this to the rest of the world. How yeah. can I help? Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. So if you want, even just five, ten minutes of your time, if you want to meditate for a little bit with me, I'll do it. Just let me know. I'm down for it. Let's do it. Yep. So I want to say, you know what? It's been a great week. Just keep that vibration going. And for those out there, you know, what I did is I went to Amazon. I got a small journal I created. It's called Small Victories. What I usually do is that every day I write down a few things. What are small victories that let's say happen, right? It, it, we always look for the big thing, right? We always are, remember the big thing. What are mm -hmm. the small wins? Like the other day I wrote down in my victory journal, I went to the doctor. I'm in 
so far good health. Um, I went to the gym, you know, I was able to wake up with gratitude. I had a breakthrough session with a client. These are cool, small victories because small victories lead to bigger victories. Not what you've done one thing, it's what you've done over time that got you where you are today. So I suggest getting a small victories journey, uh, write it down. What are you, how are you winning and what's happening so that we create that energy, right? Um, because there's so much negative force around us. It's easy to get, you know, trapped in that, but it's also as much good. It's also, so as much negativity is also much good for those that know Newton's third law of motion, everything has equal and opposite reaction. So that if negativity is 100. There's 100 of positivity that exists as well too, because it's opposite force. Yeah. So you you went to the doctor and you said everything is good. So no more balls issue. <laughs> I just thought I'd throw that out there. Um, I mean, it's it's one okay. thing they don't know. The the reality yeah. is is they don't know. I still have the same problems, but it's intermittent. But they just don't know. They just don't know. So you guys see a, a specialist. I ain't got settled to PT because it could be as simple as I just have a pelvic uh, floor issues, which is I need to stretch. So who knows? So we're gonna go through these different steps to get the resolve, right? Because it'd be easy if they tested for, let's say, UTI and it showed, oh, cool, this is the reason why. But now it's like, hey, we've done all these tests, we've done everything else, it doesn't make sense. So let's let's see outside the box. That's what's really happening. Well, that's good. That's great. That's great news. Yeah. So I want to say for our audience out there, thank you for listening to and supporting Life's a Shuffle. And thank you for listening to the Freestyle Raw. And, <laughs> you know, thanks for um, thanks for achieving the success you want in your life. And this is always, this is Ronald Johnson, your mindfulness coach. And thank you for listening to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. Yes, again, thank you for um, your support. And thank you for listening to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. This is Gloria, your mindfulness coach.